Welcome to this demo of some of the Learning Layers tools. The two tools that I'm going to be demonstrating, Bits and Pieces and Living Documents, have been developed as part of the EU-funded Learning Layers Research Project. They've been co-designed with healthcare professionals to help support their informal learning. This is the type of learning that happens as you do your job, solving problems, discussing issues with colleagues or collaborating on projects. And in particular, these tools provide a way in which a group of professionals can share information, knowledge, experiences and ideas and work together. Collaborative working at a distance has often been managed through email and this can lead to important discussions and learning being spread across multiple different email conversations and even document comments, making it hard to retrieve or share and develop those ideas and, and work further. Healthcare professionals have said to us that this does slow down their work a lot. It leads to duplication and information overload, particularly through email. So the learning layers tools are designed to help you to tie together relevant materials and discussions so that you can quickly and easily find, share and develop your ideas. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the two learning layers tools that you'll be using as part of the pilot. Bits and Pieces is the tool that allows you to easily capture, organise, share, discuss and develop your ideas, experiences and information. Living Documents is a collaborative editor that allows you to work together on writing a document with easy access to the material and discussions in bits and pieces. And as a live collaborative editor, Living Documents ensures that all the co-authors are always working on the same document, that everyone can see and discuss the content as it develops, and those discussions are linked to the document rather than lost in emails. OK, so let's get started. Both Bits and Pieces and Living Documents are web-based tools and you can access them directly from your web browser. Please make sure that you use Google Chrome web browser as that's the one they've been designed to work best in. Okay, so if you go to the Bits and Pieces login page, then you can sign in simply by clicking on the sign in button. This will take you to the login screen and if you have already created a um, Learning Layers account uh, then you can just log in here using your username and password. If you haven't yet registered an account then just click on the register a new account link and fill in the form there. There's actually a separate short video available that will tell you how to do that if you have any questions. So when Bits and Pieces opens, you'll see a screen like this. There are four important areas to this screen that I'll briefly point out and then I'll explain them in more detail as we step through the demo. So firstly, the timeline, this area at the top of the screen here. This is the area where you can see all the bits. Now, those could be notes, links to web pages, photographs, documents, audio files. Anything that you have added into bits and pieces will show up on this timeline. This is your individual view of your material and others won't see your timeline. They will see their own timeline and their own bits. And a bit appears on the timeline on the date on which you added it to bits and pieces. Now below this we see the organised pane. This is the area in which you can start to pull together and organise a particular collection of bits. 
we call these different views episodes. For example, you might decide to create an episode looking at diabetes management and to collect together and develop your ideas around all the material you've added to bits and pieces connected to diabetes. You can simply find the material in the timeline that's related to diabetes and pull it down, drag and drop, into the organised view. OK, the third area I want to point out is the sidebar. To the right of the screen, you'll see a small orange arrow. If you click on this, then the sidebar will open. This sidebar has four tabs along the top, giving you access to four separate sidebar menus, which give you many useful things that you can do there, such as looking at the activity stream, what's been happening in bits and pieces, um, searching for bits, getting more information about a particular bit. I'll just click on this one so we get it. Yeah. So getting more information there about a particular bit or indeed adding tags to that bit here. Or finally, um, looking at the episode itself and this is where you can um, share the episode. So you can close the sidebar at any point by simply clicking, clicking again on the small orange arrow. The last section I want to point out is the top menu bar along here. This contains a main menu and in the main menu you have your key options are that you can create a new episode, a, a new view in the organising panel. Um, you can add material to bits and pieces so you can create a bit that's a quick note, you can create a bit by uploading a file and you can create a link, um, a bit that is a link to a web page. Uh, you can log out in the menu and you can also switch between different episodes that you've created. So those are different views down in the organised pane, either ones that you've created or ones that other people have shared with you. Other important things to notice about the menu bar. It tells you the name of the episode, the view down here, that you're curr currently looking at. Uh, in this case, I've given this episode the rather boring name of Demo Episode. Um, it also tells you whether this is episode is a private locked episode or whether it is shared with other people. In this case, you can see that this one is locked. It's just private to me at the moment. And here we also have the link to the discussion area. Now, that's a discussion tool and it's just for this episode. So if I clicked on that, it would take us to the discussions around this episode. And then finally, along the menu bar, top menu bar, thing I want to show you is the help. You can see over here the question mark. If you click on that, it opens up in a new browser tab. It takes you to the help window. The help window has um, a brief introduction to bits and pieces explaining the four different areas like I just have. But also, if you scroll down, you'll see it has a whole set of short videos. Um, they're each lasting only about a minute or two. Um, but each of these short videos answers a specific question about how to do something in bits and pieces. So, uh, and if you have any, if you forget how to do anything, simply go to the help menu and find the um, video that will show you how to do it. So now let's return to the main bits and pieces window and take you through the steps using an example of how you could use bits and pieces yourself. So I'll go back just by clicking on the main bits and pieces tab right here and we're back looking at the main page. Now as I said before the timeline shows you your bits, the things you've added into bits and pieces, but 
how do you add these? Well, as I showed before, you can do that simply from the main menu. And there are three ways that you can add a bet. You can add a quick note. So if I choose this one, I just get to give it a title. So um, we will say In this case, uh, I might be a GP and I might just be putting in a particular note about something that happened in a consultation. Um, obviously, uh, with no patient um, identifiable data in there at all, but something that I want to note. In this case, that a particular website was useful to a diabetic patient. Um, so, as you can see, it's told me that it's been added and it's actually been added in today. This was saying three bits before, it's now saying four. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can create a bit by uploading a file, if I choose that one. So, here I can browse my computer and choose a particular file to upload. I'll choose one on um, diabetes. Add this, as you see, this is now five bits. And then the very last thing that you can do is uh, you can. Um, add a bit that's a link. So if I choose that one, I just need to know the web address. Let's say in this case, I'm going to add something in on antibiotic use, and I happen to know the NICE um, guidelines link. I find it, I copy that, go back to the bits and pieces menu, put this in, give it a title, Now, since we've created, uh, added in three bits in all in today, we have a group here of five bits. If we want to see what they are, we simply click on that and it opens it up so that we can see them each. And we can close that view just by clicking on the cross. Now, in fact, one thing that we would recommend you do is that you tag the bits as soon as you add them. Um, and that's to give the system and yourself the reminder as to what that bit is actually about. So if I just click here on the um, diabetes link, then it automatically opens up the sidebar onto the tab that shows me information about that bit. So I can edit that information here, but I can also down here add a tag. Um, now I could add, just type in a tag, uh, diabetes, and it will add it. I can also choose um, one of the recommended tags, and the recommendation will be based on um, what I've been doing recently and what it knows about the document. So um, the more you use tags, the better the recommendations are. So we would strongly recommend that you use tags, um, you and your colleagues, um, both to improve the recommendations and also to help you quickly find bits later when you're searching for material. So let's return to the main view. And for this example, I'm going to imagine that I'm a practice manager who's part of a federation of GP practices. Our federation has decided that we're going to review our approach across the GP practices of prescribing antibiotics. 
we want to try and ensure that we're all following the same approach and presenting a unified and clear picture to patients. And we think it's likely that our joint review will lead to the development of a, a new shared policy and uh, material that we'll share for patient information as well. And uh, I've been given the task of kicking this off and starting the, the um, work. So the first thing I want to do is to set up a new episode in which to start exploring this topic. And I can do that by choosing Create New Episode from the menu here. So let's call this um, Antibiotic Policy Review. OK. As I've created the new episode, you can see uh, the name appears up there. The screen down here is blank now because we're creating a new view. And it's automatically opened the sidebar um, to give me information about that episode. I can add in more to the description if I want here. And I can immediately choose to share it with others. But for the moment, we'll just close this sidebar. Now next I want to check what material I already have in bits and pieces related to uh, antibiotic prescribing. I know, I know that I added some things earlier in this month, so I'm just going to look at the, along the timeline here. I can move the timeline just by dragging, drag and drop with the mouse, and I, can, I know that earlier in May I added some stuff, so I'll open that up and see and yes, yeah, sure enough, there's quite a lot of stuff in there about antibiotics. So I'm going to pull those down here. Yeah. Okay. So that's found the ones I remembered when I'd added them. But actually, they're probably likely to be some more as well. So another way I can find what I have gathered about antibiotics is to use the search tab on the sidebar. So if I open the sidebar up and I go to the search tab, the magnifying glass. Now, I can either search just by clicking on one of these tags. As you can see, I use bits and pieces quite a lot, so there's quite a lot of tags in there available to me. There may be far fewer when you start using bits and pieces. Um, if there aren't relevant tags, you can just add in some text here. However, I happen to notice that in fact I have been adding antibiotic as a tag, so I'm going to search based on that instead and just click on the tag. And if I scroll down, the results, everything it's found that I've tagged with antibiotics is down here. And I can just find these, take these and um, again, same as with the timeline, just drag and drop them into the organising view. Any that I think are particularly relevant. Okay. Now, of course, at the moment I'm deciding what to add simply based on the name of the bit. If I want to find out more about any of these bits, then all I need to do is to click on them. So if I click on a bit, it will open up the side tab that gives me more information about that bit. It will tell me when it was added and it will give me a thumbnail um, showing a preview of the bit. Now in this case I can't see that very clearly um, and so I can double click on it and that will open it up in a new tab for me so I can look at it more closely. Okay. I remember that one now. Um, 
If it's actually a web link, then double clicking on it will open it up automatically in a new tab as well, like this one. And if it's a Word document or something like that, then um, double clicking on it will download it. So if you watch, you'll see it appear down here in the bottom of your web browser will be the link to it and you can open it up directly from there. Um, if it's one of these placeholder it's then actually um, the full information is in the summary that appears in the um, bit sidebar. Okay, so you can explore and find out, uh, read and get more information about the bits, actually see the full thing. One other quick um, note to make is that if you see a bit like this one here that is greyed out, um, either on the timeline or you'll have seen when we were searching, they were somewhere also greyed out in the results of the search. What this means is that that bit is already used by you in one or more episodes. Um, bits like these here that are appearing in full colour have not yet been used by me in any episodes. Now of course you can use a bit in as many episodes as you want but this is just a visual uh, sign to you as to whether a bit is actually being used somewhere. So now let's close the sidebar and have a look at what I've actually collected here on antibiotic material. Now this is the point at which I'll probably decide that I'd like to start organising this somehow, making shape and sense out of it. Um, so for example I can see that I have a few things that are actually policies um, and so I might decide that I'm going to uh, create a group and group together the things that are policies. To do that all I need to do is go to a, a, a free space in the screen and double click and it will create a group for me, a circle. And I can pull the things that I think are policies into that circle. And if I double click on the title of the circle, it will open up and allow me to change its name. And now I can move the whole circle around with its bits in it as well. And I can do the same for um, the other material that I've created here as well. And rather than watch you watch me do all of that. I shall quickly do it now and come back and show you it once I've uh, organised it all. So, as you can see, I've now organised all of the bits that were in that episode. Um, and I just wanted to show you that you can create uh, you know, a, a reasonably complex organisation if you want with overlapping groups, or you could just be creating them without any overlaps. It's entirely uh, what works for you. So sharing this episode now with others would allow people to get a quick overview, a visual overview of the material and ideas that I've gathered so far. And it'll also allow them to contribute new ideas and material themselves. So let's do that now. To share an episode, I can just open the sidebar and choose the episode tab. Scroll up to the top here, that's the briefcase tab, is the episode tab. Here I can choose to share the episode. Now I can choose to share it for co-editing. This means that the people I share it with will all be able to edit the same episode as me. Or I could choose to share it as a separate copy. That would mean that I give other people a separate copy, which they can just use for reference or develop further, but their copy is now separate from mine and we won't be working together on the same copy. 
Now in this case I want other people to contribute to what I'm doing and so I'm going to choose share for co-editing. Now to find the people I want to share it with all I need to do is to start typing their email address into this share with box and when their name appears choose them. Having chosen one person I can find another and another. And when I've got everybody there who I want to include, I simply click on the share button. And as you'll see, there's a message there telling me that it has been shared successfully. Now the next time one of those users logs into bits and pieces, and goes to the menu, they will see that episode, Antibiotic Policy Review, in their list of episodes because I've shared it with them. But not only that, um, the next time they receive an email notification from the Bits and Pieces system, it will tell them that I shared that episode with them. For the groups taking part in the pilot, we've um, discussed it with them and set the notification emails to be sent only once per week. But actually that can be tailored and they can be sent out more often if required. Now, I'll just close the sidebar and show you that actually if we now look at this episode, it's, start, it's looking a little bit different for us now as well. Uh, first of all, if we look at the top now, we can see that this is a shared episode and if we click on the um, number, we can see who it's been shared with. We can see it's a shared episode because the lock is open, but in fact it's not public, it's still only shared with the people listed in the contributors list. You can also see that the episode is now faded out and there's a request editing lock button has appeared. Now, although this is a shared episode, only one person can edit it at a time to ensure that there are no conflicts in the changes made. So I can actually still view and edit the details of any of the bits by clicking on them. So I click on that. It still appears and I can edit the details here. But if I want to move any of these circles around or add any new bits in here, I need to click on the request editing lock first. When we do this, we return to the clearer view of the episode that we had before and I can make the changes that I want. If there's something I want to um, pull down here, I can add something in and I can move the circles around again. The request editing lock button has now changed to say release editing lock. This episode is now going to be locked for five minutes to give me time to do what I want to do, the changes I want to make. And after that five minutes, it will be automatically released. And if I want to continue making changes, then I'll have to click on the lock button again. Now, in fact, if I'm happy with what I've done here and I've finished, then I can, in fact, release the editing lock before the five minutes is up just by clicking on here. And as you see, we go back to the faded um, version now and one of my colleagues working in a different organisation, they, they can open this up now. So we now have a shared episode in which my colleagues can also add material and thoughts and make changes to the organisation. But it's likely that we're actually going to want to discuss what we're doing here, not just make changes. 
and to do that I can use the discussion tool. If I click on the discussion tool, the speech bubbles up here in the top menu bar, then it will take me to the discussion area for this particular episode, for this organisational view down here. If I click on this, it takes it to me to the discussion tool in a new tab. The first time you click on it, it will ask you to log in again, um, but it's exactly the same username and password that you used before um, for to get into bits and pieces. The Learning Layers tools um, all use uh, the same account across the tools. It's just the first time you access each tool with that account, you'll be asked if you want to authorise the tool link into that account. But after that, the login should be seamless across the tools. So now I'm in the discussion area and I can start a new discussion simply by clicking on the green button, start new discussion. Yeah. And I can just simply type in um, the name for the discussion and some content. And um, I can add tags to the discussion as well. And again, it's giving me um, recommended tags, so I'll click on that. Uh, and policies isn't there, but I can just um, type that in as a new tag. And then when I'm ready, I can publish it. And we see it created there in the discussion area. Now, if there was another discussion um, I wanted to start, another question, uh, I can just click on the green button again and again add in my uh, question. As well as adding the tags, the other thing I can do by clicking on this bits and pieces link is to actually add, attach a particular bit to the question that I'm adding or the discussion I'm having and that might be helpful if it's a particular um, document that I'm wanting someone to look at and answer the question about. So in this case I'm going to attach um, our current policy so people will know that's the one I mean. as you can see it's attached to that discussion there. So in this view we see the top message in each discussion and if we want to reply to that message or see if anyone else has already replied then we just click on the name of the discussion. And this now opens it up and we can see all the posts in that discussion. In fact, we see that uh, I got a very quick answer um, and uh, I can reply to that now. Okay, as you can see, my answer has been added. So that's the discussion tool area. If we now go back to bits and pieces, so I'll go back to the main tab here, and if we refresh this page, Sometimes it takes a little time. You can see now that the um, discussion tool icon has changed. It's now telling us how many discussions, two, are linked to this episode and it's telling me that I don't have any um, unread entries to read. I've read all the posts that are in there. 
So looking at this icon when you first log into a shared episode will let you know if there's anything new for you to read in the discussion tool. Additionally, the fact that someone has started a discussion in a shared episode or added a new post to an existing discussion is also something that will be included in the next notification email that you are sent by the Bits and Pieces system. So I've now shown you the main parts of Bits and Pieces, introduced the four different areas of the screen, the timeline, the organising view, the sidebar, and the main menu. I've shown you how you can add bits, how to create a new episode and to start to organise your material and thoughts around a certain topic, how to share that episode with others and how to have discussions around the episode. I'll now move on to show you how all the creative work, exploration and discussions you've had in bits and pieces can be taken with you into Living Documents to help you create a new document, a policy, a protocol, funding bid or report based on this material. The route into Living Documents is through the discussion area. So let's return there. Next to the Start New Discussion button, you'll see another button which has the Living Documents icon on it. If you click on this, it will take you into Living Documents. It should take you automatically to the living document that's been created for this Bits and Pieces episode. But, and if it's the first time you're logging into Living Documents, then you'll be prompted to use your um, login details. Again, an authorised Living Documents to use the account. After the first time, it should work like it just has for me and be seamless and not require you to log in again. Your Living Document will have the same name as the Bits and Pieces episode that we came from, so Antibiotic Policy Review. You can just open the document by clicking on its name in the list here. Um, I have been doing quite a lot of work in Living Documents, so there's quite a few documents there. Uh, you will probably have fewer to start with. So here is the main screen for Living Documents. This is a collaborative editor and the bits and pieces document that you're looking at here will have been automatically shared with everyone who was a contributor to the episode in bits and pieces. So all of you will be able to open and edit this document by following that link from bits and pieces. There are three key areas that I want to show you in Living Documents. The main editing screen, the discussions and the sidebar that includes links to your bits and pieces material. So the main editing area is here in the middle of the screen and you'll see the editor has a range of the normal formatting um, functions that you'd expect. And you could just start typing in this main editing window. This is a live collaborative editing editor, which means that multiple people can actually edit the document at the same time, as you can see happening here. However, it's probably more likely that you will find that you are adding editing at different times from your colleagues due to your busy workloads.
One thing you'll see here is that different authors' um, contributions to the document appear highlighted in different colours. And that's so you can keep track of who's editing and adding what. Um, however, if you want to turn that off, that's quite possible. You just go to the settings and you can turn the colours off there. You might find that this editing window is too small for you, in which case you can simply open up the full screen editor by clicking on this button. Now you still have access to all of the formatting, um, but uh, you have a normal large screen in which you can do your editing. And when you're finished, you can simply close that by clicking on the cross. The second area I want to show you in Living Documents is the discussion area. This sits underneath the document and here you can find the discussions. Now if you look you'll see these discussions here are actually the two discussions that we started when we were in bits and pieces. They are also accessible within living documents and we can simply switch between the discussions by clicking on their names here. And you can continue the discussion in living documents. So if I scroll down here I'm able to add a new comment by clicking on plus sign. And then clicking on create. And you'll see that gets added to that discussion. I can actually create a whole new discussion just by clicking on the plus side next to discussions. I need to give this one a title. Um, create. Now you'll see we have three discussions and we can move between them just by clicking on the titles. And something important I want to show you here is if we were to go back to the discussion area in bits and pieces, the tab up here, and refresh this page, You can see that our new discussion now appears here as well. And uh, you can see here there are three comments on this discussion. So our new comment that we added from Living Documents is also here. So the discussion area is actually shared between bits and pieces in Living Documents. And you can start a discussion in one tool and continue it in the other. And it will all keep synchronized and up to date. So returning now to Living Documents, the link up here, I want to show you the other way in which Living Documents and Bits and Pieces are linked. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see an area titled BMP Circles and Bits and a button there saying Show. If we click on Show, then here we can see all the bits that were in the episode that is linked to from which this living document was created. So any bit that we were discussing in that episode, any bit that we included in the episode is also available to us to look at 
um, from within living documents. And if it's a placeholder bit and we click on it, it'll show up here what the content is because placeholders and notes are just quite small. Um, if it's a, a link, it will open it up in a new tab. And if it's a document, then um, document. if it's a document, then it will download it. And you can see that appear downloaded at the bottom of our web browser. And we could click on that link there and it would open up in whatever our normal word processing editor is. So from within Living Documents, you have access to all the material that you gathered, organised and discussed in bits and pieces. And you can copy and paste important material from the bits or the discussions straight into your document where appropriate. So the final part I'd like to point out is the recommendations. Living documents and bits and pieces are connected using some clever technology that allows them to make recommendations to you about other documents you might want to look at and other users who seem to have similar interests or to be working on a similar area. You can see those recommendations by going down on the, to the right hand side here and clicking on show. Now in fact at the moment there's not enough data in the system for it to be making recommendations to me. But the more data, the more documents and the more users and the more that people use tags, the bet more recommendations will be made and the better those recommendations will be. So we would strongly encourage you to add tags um, throughout bits and pieces and also living documents. You can add a tag to your living document by going up to the top here where it says tags and simply clicking on the plus. So I can add an existing tag or if I want to create a new one I can just create a new one. So I hope this now given you an overview of these two learning layers tools and how they can be used together to help you to collect, explore and organise your materials and thoughts on a topic, to share them and discuss them with colleagues and then use all of that to help you write a new policy, guideline, report, recommendation. And by tying together the material, the discussions and the writing in this way, and not letting it get lost in email discussions. The aim is to make the collaborative working and learning across practices easier, more manageable and more streamlined, allowing you to grow your good ideas into real practice improvements. We hope you enjoy using the tools and if you have any questions at all, please contact us.